Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Clemens and I'm going to be sharing a PowerPoint with you that will help you summarize the book, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, okay? Um, this is gonna be a good tool for anyone that struggled with any of the chapters and also it'll be a good way to study for your test. So chapter one, so we start off with our character whose name is Bruno, okay? He's our main character, our protagonist in the story. And he is a nine-year-old boy who lives in Berlin. And he's very young, very naive. Um, he comes home one day after playing with his three best friends. Um, and he finds his family maid, Maria, going through his belongings. So he asks her to stop, but she shakes her head. So he's upset. And so Bruno's mom comes in and explains to Maria, or explains that Maria is packing all of his things. So mother then asks Bruno to come downstairs with her so that she can explain what is happening. So his mom tells him that his father's job in the army is making them move far away from Berlin for the time being. Um, Bruno's sad that he'll have to leave his friends, and he loves to cause mischief, run around and, and be a boy, and he's afraid he's going to lose that with the move. Uh, Mom says to him, this is the end of the matter. We are moving. And so Bruno is not taking that well. So in the picture, you have him looking around one last time. His house is huge. It has five stories to it. And that's an example of um, the like the foyer living room area. In chapter two, this is where they arrive at their new home. They um, had to travel far away. So it took a while. They took a train to get there. Um, and Bruno decides that this home that he sees is the exact opposite of their old home. So this house has three floors and not five. Um, his house in Berlin was on a popular street, okay, in town where there was lots of people um, around. This house stands alone, okay? There's no other families or houses around it. So Bruno tells his mom that he thinks moving was a bad idea. So she scolds him for saying such a thing. And she says that some people make all the decisions for the household. Some people referring to her husband. Bruno goes to help Marie unpack and he starts looking in the rooms of the house as he goes and he's not happy with what he sees. He decides that the house is not a home and never will be. Trying to hold back his tears, he goes over to a window that he sees. Um, in his room in Berlin, he was able to see clear across the city from the window, okay? Here, there's no city to see, but he sees something that makes him feel very cold and unsafe. And as he peers out that window, his mouth makes the shape of an O. And so the picture below is just um, an example of what his house looked like. Chapter three. Chapter three is where we're introduced to Bruno's sister, Gretel. Okay, she's 12 years old and Bruno and her don't always get along much like siblings, you know, do. They like to argue. Um, he was a little scared of her at times because Gretel and her friends would taunt him, um, make fun of him, pick on him, and insisting that he was only six instead of nine. Um, Gretel was a collector of dolls um, and she spent a lot of time taking care of them. Um, this is one day where the kids actually got along. They started talking about how long they would live in the new house. Father had told them that they would be living there for the foreseeable future. So to Gretel, she thought it meant three weeks. Um, one thing that the kids do agree on is that the location for their home is horrible. Um, Gretel said that Bruno 
or Gretel tells Bruno that father told her nothing about the people who had lived at Outwith. Um, the children wonder what Outwith means. So Gretel guesses that it means out with the people who lived here before us. Um, Bruno then says that he doesn't think the other children look at all friendly. So Gretel asks him what he means by the other children because there's no other houses around anywhere. So Bruno reluctantly shows her what he sees outside the window. So she was just as shocked as he was. So in the two pictures, you see Bruno and his sister Gretel looking out the window. Um, and then you also see one of the little boys, his name is Schmal. He's another main character um, on the other side of the fence. So in chapter four, Gretel realizes that what Bruno has seen are not just children. He sees men of all ages, or they see men of all ages, um, and they have no idea what they're doing there. And they're kind of confused and unsure as to where the women are. So as she looks out the window even further, she sees that the people live on the other side of the fence and it's very high with huge wooden posts like telegraph poles dotted along it, holding it up. And the top of this fence has barbed wire. So behind this fence, there's no greenery. So no trees, no bushes, no flowers. Only this sand-like substance. They have some low huts and large square buildings. Um, the children continue to wonder who the people are. They can see multiple people in groups marching around being shouted at by soldiers. Um, Bruno continues to stare out of the window and he notices one thing that he hasn't noticed before, that everyone was wearing a pair of gray striped pajamas and a gray striped cap on their heads. So the picture below kind of represents um, the group of men getting yelled at um, in their striped pajamas. So in chapter five, Bruno decides he needs to talk to his dad. His dad had left for the new house a few days before um, the family closed up the house in Berlin and left for out with. Okay. So Bruno's like, I haven't seen my dad. I have to tell him how I feel because Bruno, if you haven't noticed already, seems to be a little bit outspoken. Um, one exception though, Bruno just like in Berlin and here, has never really been allowed in his father's office. His father's office is considered to be out of bounds at all times and no exceptions. So he finally sees his father and his father says, hey, Bruno, I'm so proud of you um, for helping your mom and sister close the house. He then starts talking to him and asks him what he thinks of their new home. So Bruno admits that he doesn't like it but father says that he must accept out with as the family's new home. Bruno starts to ask his dad when the family is returning to their home in Berlin. And father says a home is not a physical location, but it's where one's family is. And so he's talking about him, his wife, Gretel and Bruno. Um, father also tells him that sometimes one has to do things in life that they have no choice in. Um, the Fury believes that father's position is important, so he must be it out with, out of duty to his country. So the Fury, if you guys haven't picked up on that, is Hitler. So Hitler gave Bruno's dad an order to be in charge at out with. So you don't say no to Hitler. And so that's why he had to pack up his family and move them. So chapter six, a few days have gone by. Bruno's lying in his bed, looking at the cracks in the bedroom walls because you know, he's not happy with the house. Maria enters with freshly laundered clothes and Bruno asks her if she agrees with his feelings about out with. She doesn't say anything. 
So Bruno begs her to tell him how she feels because he still hopes to convince father to take them home, okay? And that's especially if he can tell his dad that everyone feels the same way he does. So Maria shakes her head sadly and tells Bruno that his father knows what is best. But under his breath, Bruno says, stupid father. And so Maria says, hey, you shouldn't say that. Maria says that father was a good man and takes care of them. Bruno admits that how his father had treated Maria and her mother was very nice. And so decides to stop trying to recruit Maria to his campaign to leave out with. Um, and if you remember, um, Bruno's dad had helped Maria along with um, her mother um, for some time and actually took Maria in and gave her a job. So Maria says that even if that's how he feels, he cannot say what he feels out loud. Bruno is so confused as why he can't say things. Um, and so Maria asks him to remain quiet because he could cause a lot of trouble for all of them, um, including Maria. And Bruno is so young and naive at this point, he really just doesn't understand what the big deal is. Okay, chapter seven. So after being out with a few weeks, Bruno finally says, okay, I don't think I'm going home to Berlin anytime soon. So he's like, I better figure out something to do with my time before I go crazy. So from inside the house, Bruno notices a large oak tree with a wide trunk and decides it is the perfect tree to have a tire swing. So he sees Lieutenant Kotler, who is one of um, father's right hand guys and Gretel speaking outside. So Bruno goes to say hello and Gretel seems irritated because her time with the Lieutenant has been interrupted. And she was like, what do you want? So Bruno asks Kotler if there's any spare tires around the house. So Kotler makes Pavel, who's an old man who waits on the family, take Bruno to find a tire in the storage shed. So Bruno finally gets the tire swing together and he starts swinging on it and enjoying his time outside. Um, but then he falls off and scrapes his knee. So Pavel, who has been keeping an eye on him from the kitchen, comes out, takes him inside, and he patches up Bruno's knee because mother and father were both not around, okay? So when mother comes home, she sees this bandage on Bruno's knee, and he explains what happened with the tire swing. So he tells her how Pavel brought him inside when he fell and how he bandaged his wound. From outside the kitchen, Bruno hears mother tell Pavel, if the commandant asks, we'll say I cleaned Bruno up. And Bruno is so confused. He's like, why would my mother do something selfish like that is take responsibility for something she had not done? He's not realizing that mother is trying to protect Pavel because Bruno is being sheltered from everything and he really doesn't understand what is in his backyard. Um, chapter eight. So Bruno misses his three best friends very much, but the two people he misses the most are his grandparents. Okay, his grandfather um, ran a restaurant and his grandmother um, was a professional singer. And so when they lived in Berlin, Bruno and Gretel and his grandma would perform these plays where they would have costumes and singing and things like that. Um, something exciting had happened with father. Okay, he now had to be addressed by Maria, their cook, and Lairs um, as commandant after the fury and a beautiful blonde woman came for dinner. So this is kind of like a flashback. Uh, mother told Bruno to congratulate father, but he wasn't sure what for. Grandfather seemed very proud, but grandmother acted unimpressed. 
she pretty much um, blamed herself for dressing him up and having him, you know, do these things as a child because he's now not thinking for himself. He's thinking according to what other people want. And she's referring to Hitler. So um, Bruno recalls that he hadn't seen much of his grandmother after that night. And he didn't even get a chance to say goodbye to her um, or grandfather before they left for out with. Because what they did was they had a party to congratulate father for his um, promotion. And so in the picture here, you can see um, grandfather, grandmother, father, and then the mother. Okay, chapter nine. So in their house, they constantly have soldiers coming and going. Um, and Lieutenant Kotler is always there, okay? Um, he became close with mother and he also um, kind of humored Gretel and allowed her to flirt with him, even though he was a lot older than she was. Um, one day, father came home and was like, Bruno, you and Gretel have to continue resuming your studies. Um, and so he hires a man named Ayer Litz to come to the house to teach the children each day. Um, and so he was very strict and stern. He wanted to teach them about history and geography, um, even though Bruno just wanted to read and study art. A few days later, Bruno's in his room thinking about all the things he was able to do in Berlin, but has not been able to do since moving to Outwith. So he realizes the one thing he misses is exploring. So he decides that he's going to investigate the grounds outside the house. And he chooses to go explore that fence, even though he has been told that it is off limits. And so the picture down at the bottom shows um, Bruno and how he is exploring. Okay, chapter 10. So Bruno walks the length of the fence for a long time, okay, because this fence is several miles long. Um, and he kind of walks until his house is so far away that he cannot see it any longer. Um, he sees a small dot in the distance and he doesn't really realize what it is. He perhaps is thinking it's like a mirage. So as Bruno gets closer, he realizes that that dot was a boy. So he notices that the boy is wearing striped pajamas. Um, he is seen looking out his window, right? All of those people that he saw wore the striped pajamas and they wore the cloth um, striped cap on their head. The boy is not wearing any socks or shoes, and he seems really tired, very dirty. Um, on his arm, he wears an armband with a star on it. His face is kind of gray, and his, large, his eyes are very large and sad. And Bruno thinks to himself, I've never seen such a skinny boy in my entire life. So Bruno decides to sit down on his side of the fence and tells the boy that he lives in that house. So the boy replies to him that, hey, I've seen it, but I've not seen you. So he tells him that his name is Schmall and Bruno tells Schmall his name. And so then the boys start talking and they exchange their ages and birth dates and they're shocked to find out that they have the same birth date. They were both born on April 15th, 1934. So Bruno, complains that he is so bored on his side of the fence because he has no one to play with. So he goes on to tell Schmall that he thinks it's unfair that he has so many companions. And so that picture there shows um, Schmall and Bruno interacting. So chapter 11. Bruno remembers the day that father received a new uniform along with the title Commandant. The Fury invited himself over for dinner to discuss something with father. Um, so father laid down the ground rules for the evening with Bruno and Gretel. 
Bruno observed that the Fury was short, way shorter than his father, and had short dark hair and a tiny mustache. But he did find the woman to be, her name was Eva, the most beautiful woman he had ever seen. She had blonde hair and red lips. Um, he was shocked to see that the Fury would be so rude as to sit down in father's place instead of sitting as a guest at the table. So later that night, Bruno eavesdrops on his mom and dad's conversation in father's office. And so from the little snippets or little pieces, he could hear mother saying that she did not want to leave Berlin for a place like, and father said, that's an end to the matter. And so this is where um, a few days later, Bruno comes home to find Maria packing um, his things. So that's another form of a flashback in the story. Um, and then the bottom is a picture of Hitler. So chapter 12. Schmal tries to explain to Bruno how he got to out with. Um, and remember, Bruno is really not understanding what Schmal is doing behind the fence. Bruno, he tells Bruno that he used to live with his parents and his brother Joseph in a small flat, which is another word for house, um, above his father's watchmaking shop. He used to have a watch his father made, but soldiers took it away from him, which made him really sad. Um, one day his mom made him wear um, armband with a special star on it. So Schmal goes on to tell his story and he tells them after a few months of wearing that armband, he came home to find his mother telling them they couldn't live in their house anymore. So Schmal and his family lived in one room with another family, 11 people in total. So they were moved from their house to a ghetto. And if you remember, ghetto is a term that um, I explained to you um, in the slideshow. So Bruno is not believing anything that Schmal is saying. So Schmal continues and says his mother was taken away from them and that he, his father and brother were put into huts on this side of the fence. And that's where they've been ever since. And he tells Bruno that there are hundreds of other people on that, on his side of the fence. And Bruno was like, well, that's not totally like unfair. You have all these people to play with and I have no one. So that tells you um, maturity levels. Poor Schmal has had to grow up and age a lot more um, than Bruno has. He knows that he is now in a concentration camp. Um, he knows that the soldiers are mean. Um, where Bruno is thinking about himself. He seems a little bit more selfish. Um, he's more worried about exploring and having people to play with. Um, Bruno then decides after exploring, he better go home for dinner. And he at first was gonna tell his family all about his exploration and this new friend. But then as he gets closer to the house, he realizes, yeah, I better not tell anybody because they might tell me not to be friends with him and they might not let me explore. In chapter 13, after weeks go on, Bruno realizes he's not going to be returning to Berlin anytime soon. And he gets used to life at out with. And so he stops feeling so unhappy. And what he does start doing is he starts to fill his pockets with food and he takes that food to Schmal. Um, he does eat some of it himself, but he does bring the rest of it to Schmal. Um, one day Bruno asks Maria about Pavel and says, hey, why does he work as a waiter if he's really a doctor? So Maria is kind of speechless because she can't believe that Pavel actually told Bruno so she explains that Pavel was a doctor in another life before he came to live at Outwith. 
Um, at the fence then, Bruno finds Small waiting on him and he gives Schmall the food and asks if he knows Pavel. Schmall says that Bruno needs to understand that there are literally thousands of people living on this side of the fence, and it is unlikely that he knows Pavel. So then they change the subject, and they start talking about what they want to be when they grow up. So Schmall says he wants to work in a zoo, like be a zookeeper, because he likes animals. Bruno says he wants to be a soldier like father. He wants to be a good one, not a mean one like Lieutenant Kotler. So Schmall then starts to get upset when Bruno mentions Kotler's name and says that he does not like talking about him because he's scary. Well, when he gets back to the house, he notices that Lieutenant Kotler is going to be joining them for dinner and this makes him very unhappy. So they're having dinner and Pavel is waiting on them like he normally does. But Pavel seems to be smaller and more withered and having a hard time um, serving their meal. So as time goes on, um, they start talking about school and whatnot and Lieutenant Kotler kind of joins in and father realizes that Lieutenant Kotler's father kind of took off because he did not believe what was going on in the war and Lieutenant Kotler kind of let that slip. And it, is his, it was his duty to report his father to the German army and he didn't. And so he realizes, hey, I kind of got caught up in this kind of secret I was keeping. And so Pavel accidentally spills some wine on Lieutenant Kotler. So Lieutenant Kotler takes out his frustrations on Pavel. He drags him to another room um, and beats him to death as the family just sits there. Um, and so this is one form of, of abuse and power um, that the children along with mother see in their own house. And father just sat there and allowed Lieutenant Kotler to do that to Pavel. So in the pictures down below, you can see the children at the dinner table and you can see Lieutenant Kotler. Chapter 14. So Bruno continues to like sneak out of the house after he does his lessons and his schooling with Air Litz. Um, and he spends time talking to Schmall through the fence. And he stays usually until it's around dinner time. So one day he goes there, Schmall has a black eye, but he doesn't tell Bruno how he gets it. So Bruno assumes it must have been the work of a bully. Okay, just like one that he encountered in school when he lived in Berlin. Um, not realizing that Schmall probably didn't walk quick enough or didn't carry something fast enough. And that's probably what got him that black eye. Um, so one day, Bruno asked Schmall while he and everyone else only wear those striped pajamas. And so Schmall was like, well, they took our clothes and that's what they gave us once we came to out with. And so Bruno couldn't understand why they only had one change of clothes. So a few days later, it's starting to rain and it's raining really hard. And so Bruno realizes he will not be able to visit his friend Schmall. So Gretel comes into the room and so they kind of get into it as usual and he complains about the rain and that he should be with his friend Schmall. But then he realizes, yeah, I probably shouldn't have mentioned him because now Gretel is like, listen, you better tell me what exactly you're talking about. So at first Bruno pretends like he didn't say anything but Gretel wouldn't let up. So he made up a story that he has an imaginary friend. Um, and so she says, you better not tell father that you have an imaginary friend or um, he will think you've gone mad. 
So that's kind of where the conversation has gone. And so you can see this is a picture of Gretel here. And she is um, in her room with her dolls. In chapter 15, um, Bruno continues to dislike Kotler. Um, he calls him little man. Um, he hangs around the house more than he should. He makes mom laugh more than father does. Um, one day Bruno sees a dog barking from his window. And so Kotler goes outside and, and shoots it. Um, Bruno is still very upset with how Kotler treated Pavel. And he's also mad that when father is away on business, Kotler seems to stay overnight and acts as if he is in charge of the house. Um, one case is when Bruno was reading Treasure Island in the living room. This was a book that um, Bruno's father had given him. He pulls it away and kind of taunts him with it, um, playing keep away. Um, and he finally does give the book back to him. Um, Bruno tries to get away from him. So he goes into the kitchen and he is shocked to find Schmall sitting there. So Lieutenant Kotler brought him there to polish mother's glasses because they were going to have a small party for father. Um, and they needed somebody with little fingers to do the job. So Bruno starts talking to him and he rummages for something to eat in the refrigerator. So he pulls out some cold chicken and some stuffing and he cuts a few pieces and he talks to Schmall while stuffing food in his face. So Schmall is kind of like, oh gosh, I wish I could eat that. So Bruno is like, oh, I'm sorry. I should have offered to give this to you. So he cuts him some food, but Schmall says, hey, I can't take that. Otherwise, Lieutenant Kotler, he'll catch me and I will be in big trouble. And Bruno's like, no, it's not. You're my friend. You can eat. So Schmall eats the food very quickly and he thanks him because he's so hungry. But what happens is Kotler comes into the kitchen and he says to Schmall, where did you get that food? And he said, my friend gave it to me. And so Bruno freaks out because he doesn't want to get in trouble. So Bruno lies. He lies about knowing Schmall to save himself from getting in trouble. And he acts like he doesn't know Schmall um, at all. So in the picture, you'll see um, Bruno and Schmall interacting where Bruno gave him some food. And you'll see um, Lieutenant Kotler questioning um, Bruno and his um, lie, trying to catch him in a lie, I should say, whether or not he knew Schmall. Okay, in this chapter, the family did go back to Berlin, and that's because um, grandmother passed away, okay? He had not seen his grandma in a long time, um, and father was actually sad because he and his mom did not make up from their fight. Um, while they're at the funeral, the fury delivered a wreath and the mother says, your grandmother would have rolled over in her grave if she would have known this. We have to remove this. And father was like, um, no, grandfather would have wanted it. So they left that wreath there. And this is also where we start to see um, a bigger change in the relationship between mother and father. Uh, mother is just becoming more and more um, withdrawn and sad about living it out with. Um, Bruno is actually quite happy when they leave Berlin now. He is friends in the distance. Um, are starting to become like blurs. Um, he realizes Outwith isn't so bad because he has a friend that he can talk to. Um, around the same time, um, Lieutenant Kotler has been transferred away from Outwith and put on the front lines. And this is due to the fact that he did not um, report his father's disloyalty to the party. Um, we see a change in Gretel here as well. 
Gretel becomes obsessed with maps and following the events in the newspaper. So she gets rid of all her dolls and she kind of like is covering her walls with maps and things to represent the war. So Bruno starts to talk to her and asks her why the people are on the other side of the fence. And she is shocked that he still doesn't know. So this tells you how naive and young he is. She explains that they are Jews and that they must be kept together with their own kind behind the fence. So then Bruno, Bruno is like, well, if you and I are, um, are not Jews, then what are we? And she says that they are the opposite of Jews. So here, um, Gretel herself is kind of having a hard time explaining um, what a Jew is and what's the difference between them, meaning Bruno and Gretel, and those behind the fence. Um, so in the picture there, you'll see that's the, the mother with the father and that's the attending grandmother's funeral. And then the other picture is Gretel in her room. Chapter 17. This is where mom is becoming more and more unhappy. Um, Bruno starts to hear mother and father yelling in his office. Um, he realizes that there may be a chance for the family to go back to Berlin. And he doesn't understand or know how he feels about it because he's gotten used to his life at Outwith. Um, life starts to go on as usual. Gretel became more obsessed with her maps and taking in everything that Erlitz had to say. Uh, mother was taking more and more naps and having more and more medicinal sherries. Um, so one day, father summons Gretel and Bruno into his office and asks them if they are happy um, at Outwith. After their conversation, father says that they will go back to Berlin with mother, but he has to stay at Outwith due to the commands of the Fury. So father says he does agree that Outwith is not the best place to raise children. So they all will be returning back to Berlin. So chapter 18, Schmal does not show up at the fence for several days. Um, and Bruno is overjoyed when he finally does, but Schmal is upset, okay? He has not been able to find his father and does not think Bruno's father would be able to help, even though Bruno offers to ask him. He's sad when Bruno tells him that he's going back to Berlin. Bruno is like, I wish we could just play together one time before we have to leave. So Schmal lifts up the fence and there's room enough for Bruno to crawl under it. Bruno's afraid that he'll get in trouble, but he has an idea. So Schmal could bring Bruno a pair of the striped pajamas that he could change into and slip under the fence the following day. Um, and with Bruno's head shaved, he would fit in with the other boys in camp. Um, and Bruno returns home excited for his adventure. Now let me talk about real quick why Bruno's head was shaved. Um, one day while Gretel was brushing her hair, she noticed this little bug screamed, mom checked, she was full of lice. They checked Bruno, he was full of lice. So father decided to shave his head to get rid of the lice. Um, and that was another reason mother was unhappy. She thought that place was filthy. Okay, chapter 19. Even though it's raining, Bruno goes to meet Schmal at the fence anyway, and he's unhappy to leave his clothes in the mud, but seeing the look on Schmal's face when he asks Bruno to come help his father, find his father makes him realize that, hey, I must go through with it. This is my last adventure with my friend. So he changed into the smelly striped pajamas 
and climbs under the fence. So Bruno is shocked at the world on the other side of the fence. He thought it would be filled with happy families. He thought there would be like cafes. You know, he thought it would be what he was used to living like. But instead, it was miserable. He saw sickly people that were sitting in groups. Um, a lot of these people were being taunted or picked on by soldiers. Or oftentimes, you would find them staring into space. Bruno says, yeah, I don't think I like it here, and decided he wanted to go home. But he had promised Schmal he would help him find his father. Um, after a while, they couldn't find the father, so Bruno's like, can you walk me back to the fence? Cause I gotta get home. So at that moment, soldiers round up people for a march. And this is what they called death marches and they marched them directly to their death. So Bruno says, um, hey, I gotta get home. And Schmal's like, listen, you better not say anything or the soldiers are gonna get angry. So in this march, they're swept into this long, warm room. So Bruno's like, well, hey, they probably just brought us in here so that we do not get wet. Um, but they were made to take off their clothes and they were frightened and they stood there. Um, Bruno then decides to tell Schma that he is his best friend for life. The soldiers close the doors to the room and everyone gasps. And this is where the room goes dark and Bruno continues to hold Schmal's hand. And this is where the fate of the two boys comes to an, an end. Um, they were put into um, a gas chamber where they were, um, the soldiers would put those pellets and you would drop the pellets to the ground and they would burst open and all that poisonous gas would kind of like suffocate the people. So you can see them there um, with Bruno with his striped pajamas on, um, the picture in the middle, them in the gas chambers, and then them holding hands. So chapter 20 is our last chapter. Um, Bruno's never heard from again. They have soldiers search every part of the house, every part of the village. They do find his clothes at the fence, but they seem, it seems to everybody like Bruno just vanished. Um, originally, mother was supposed to head back to Berlin, but she decided to stay it out with hoping that he would turn up. Um, after some time, she does return to Berlin. Um, all she does is cry, okay, because mother is missing um, Bruno, Gretel is missing Bruno, and they, you know, hoped that maybe Bruno would have found his way back to Berlin. Um, father stayed it out with for a year, um, but he began to order the soldiers around mercilessly and uh, became very disliked. So even his personality had changed. So one day father forms a theory about what happens to Bruno and he goes to the part of the fence where Bruno's clothing was found. And when he puts all the facts and his theories together, he collapses from the weight of his realization that his son died at the concentration camp. Um, a few months later, different soldiers um, came to out with and ordered father to go with them. This would be when the war was over, and this would be when the Allied soldiers, like um, soldiers from the U.S., came and they um, arrested father. Okay, so that's what that means. Um, father really didn't care because he had lost his son. He had caused this. If you guys didn't pay attention um, to my notes early on or in the reading, out with is actually Auschwitz. So Bruno and his family were at Auschwitz, okay? And so those two little boys, all they wanted to do was be friends and play. They didn't know the difference between, you know, a Jew and a, a German. Um, and so a lot of these decisions that were made, they came um, to hurt, wound up hurting 
um, this entire family. So you can see the father there, he's looking through the barracks and then you see the mom and sister who follow them as they're like searching for Bruno um, and they see the clothes at the fence. So this family will never ever be the same. So um, this slide here, I've actually read all of these um, books. So if you liked The Boy in the Striped Pajamas or you are interested in um, learning more about the Holocaust, um, these are some more books. Um, Mouse is a graphic novel for those of you who like Mouse. Um, two of my most favorite ones are The Book Thief and Between Shades of Grey. Oh, and B, Prisoner B3087. But the other ones are also very good um, as well. So I encourage you to check some of these out. Um, I hope that you um, understood the novel. I hope you enjoyed the novel.